The world is changing. Information is now becoming the most valued and sought after resource. People have always recorded and used information. The habits of animals, the course of the seasons, when to plant seeds and when to harvest. Over the centuries, people have made many inventions and discoveries in their attempts to understand the complex world around them. They invented machines to help them in their calculations and to make permanent records of their work. Now new machines have come into our lives for learning, work and entertainment. Computers. Now we can do many things more precisely and easily than ever before. The invention of the printing press in the 15th century replaced the handwritten book and revolutionized the way in which information was distributed. More people could learn about more things. The library became the symbol of the learning and knowledge of humankind. But the methods of storing information haven't changed very much since people first wrote on paper. Now the old library system just can't compete with the computer. Books are very nice objects. You can take them home and read them in bed. But they're expensive to print, to store, and to circulate. Databases hold a tremendous amount of information. 22,000 pages of new data are put into the dialogue system in the USA every day. Computers can choose from billions of alternatives in virtually a few seconds. It's just like having a giant encyclopedia at your fingertips. Barry Jones is a writer on information technology. Data is the raw material. Data's the telephone book, if you like. Information is knowing how to use the telephone. Wisdom is really what you get out of it, which makes you decide whether to act in one way or another and, and to come to what you hope will be a right decision. Perhaps in the future, we'll look back at the library as a quaint, old-fashioned database. Until recently, human knowledge grew very slowly. In 1800, recorded human knowledge was doubling every 50 years. In 1950, it was every 10 years. Now it doubles every five. It's an information explosion which just keeps accelerating. Australia imports nearly all its computer technology now. But in the 1950s, the CSIRO designed CIRAC-1, Australia's first computer and the fourth built in the world. How to move one particular datum from one part of the machine to another, at the same time carrying out a simple operation upon it, such as addition. Here you see a program being recorded. CIRAC was programmed with paper tape, using miles of wiring, large clumsy valves, and required the power of a steam train to run it. It was hailed as a miracle of science in the 1950s, but today, a silicon chip, a quarter of an inch square, can do the same work. During the 1960s, the space industry spent millions of dollars on the technology that would take human beings, for the first time, into space. Equipping satellites and rockets with computers 
led to the miniaturization of the computer. As well as becoming much smaller, the computer has become more powerful and cheaper. They cost less than a car or even a motorbike. What this has meant is that computers are now available for everyone to use in their work, at home, in education, and for leisure. This also means that computers will replace people in many service jobs. It'll be cheaper and more efficient to fill your own petrol tank from a computerized pump, which records the amount on your credit card, than to have a person do the same job. Perhaps the greatest importance of computers in the future lies in their use in the home and in communication. There's a bloke keeps on saying, London's calling, London's calling. Without the computer, a modern and effective telephone system would be unthinkable. The world's telephone system is the most complex information network known. Telephone numbers are constantly changing, and the information needs updating all the time. Every year, there are more telephone numbers and less trees. Things are changing in the French port of Saint-Malo. Here on the coast of Brittany, the French government has begun an experiment to launch every household into the computer age. The French call the idea telematique, the marriage of the telephone with the computer. What telematique means is putting computer power into the hands of people in their own homes. Où souhaitez-vous l'installer La prise téléphonique et une prise de courant. La prise du téléphone est ici. This terminal at the moment is being installed to replace the telephone book. But in the future, it can be linked to electronic mail, computerized shopping, electronic banking, and a host of other computerized information networks. The prediction is that mass computerization will take hold and become as indispensable to society as electricity. Being able to use a computer will become as common as being able to use a telephone. In the information society, people won't need to travel into the cities every day. They can work at home. The financial editor for the New York Post lives and works from his home in Connecticut. Using a computer, he's able to link into information from all over the world and transfer his work to the newspaper office in New York. Another information facility which will become available in the future for home use will be one of the video text systems. These systems offer an unlimited variety of information. You can have a question and answer session with video text. You could book a seat on an airline, find out what's on around town, check the latest stock market report, or book a package holiday. Parents can operate a computer to help their children to practice reading. Tom's rabbit came. Out. out to play with Shorty. He ran to your work, dog. Music is changing its tune. The Australian Fairlight CMI, a microprocessor, allows musicians to bring an entire orchestra into the home and they can actually see the music. Totally new sounds can be created. One, two. 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 They can make music out of a dog's bark. Pouring tea. Or stirring the sugar. With computer technology becoming cheaper, instead of going to lectures and seminars, 
teachers can communicate with their students by phone and computer. The students can live anywhere and do their study at any time. There's an old saying, if work was such a good thing, the rich would have kept it to themselves. In the so-called golden ages of history, there's always been a flowering of leisure for the rich who relied on servants to work for them. For the first time in history, there's the possibility of a servant class that doesn't involve people, computers. The first steps have been made towards the automated office of the future. Word processors are commonly used now. They can save time and paper and do repetitive work with greater speed and accuracy than people. The new technology is changing work patterns. The use of computers may eliminate interesting jobs and create more boring jobs. The secretary of the past could become the machine minder of the future. The fact is we're not too sure what will happen to work. I suspect that we may have to reallocate work and I would hope that one of the effects of uh, the technological revolution would be to enable people to have a, a diversity of, of work styles. I think the compulsory work ethic is obsolete and so it ought to be because what you find is that uh, if people don't work they are immediately devalued. Although many jobs will disappear in certain areas, new jobs will be created by the new industry. The full impact on the workforce is not yet known but jobs are definitely changing. Japan, the most robotized country on Earth, has 10,000 industrial robots which are fast replacing humans in boring, dangerous and demeaning jobs. There are already over 200 industrial robots in Australia and this number is growing rapidly. Computers can help people overcome disabilities. For this child, a special kind of patience is required. It's a patience eminently suited to a machine. This reading device for the blind scans the page, converting print into the spoken word. Mechanized arms can perform a variety of tasks for the handicapped. For some people, such as quadriplegics who only have control over their eyes, a machine is being developed which tracks the relationship between the highlight on the eye and the pupil of the eye as it moves. A camera using infrared light reads which way the person is looking and gives information to the computer. Computer technology is being used in many businesses. From a company servicing the weather forecasting needs of the entire world's shipping lines to the companies that provide the latest in computer-aided design for architects and engineers. A telecomputer system that lets you talk back uses two-way communication for collecting bad debts. Jordan Marsh is a very patient company, don't you agree? They've waited a long time now, right? Well, I'm John Johnson from Jordan Marsh, and my patience has finally reached its limit. I expect payment now. This debt will not wait any longer. Will you be mailing the amount due today or tomorrow? Speak to me. Your response, or lack of it, will become a permanent part of your record. Will you be mailing the amount due today or tomorrow? I'll take care of it today for sure, and I'm sorry I let it slip. And will you be paying this by certified check or money order? It'll be a certified check. I'm going to my bank this afternoon. Now, so that you realize that this is a commitment and not merely a promise, I will play your commitment back to you now. I'll take care of this today for sure, and I'm sorry I let it slip. Nothing short of the next two days will do. I'll be looking for your payment. Goodbye. A new way of collecting debts 
but it raises many questions about computers and the law. At the moment, computer technology is ahead of the law. The people who formulate the laws in this country, the lawyers, judges and politicians, don't understand the implications of new technology, which is rapidly moving into many areas of our lives. The possibility of computer fraud is a very real problem. Theft of information from a computer can be very expensive. Somebody can tap into the data or computer programs and copy, change or even erase them. The intrusion might not even be noticed. Three, one, three, zero, three, two, to trap and run. Get him, we will get him, we will get him. Let's back that one up, let's back it up. There we are, there we are, there we are. There we are, we got that one, that's the one, that's the one I want. 31. Organized crime with all its resources is likely to be the greatest source of computer crime in the decade ahead. If companies can't safeguard their computer operations at every stage, they may as well give all their information to the criminals in the first place. The possession of information often means possessing power and control. The possibility of a huge gap developing between those who possess information or have access to information and those who don't is greater than ever before. 120 years ago when universal uh, primary education came out there were very great rewards for people who could read and write and there are very great penalties for those who could not. And I think that in the age of the information revolution in the post-industrial society that we're in there'll be very real uh, economic and psychological rewards for the people who can master the technology and who are on top of it and whose world view is enormously expanded.